And now that we have all of the graphic elements and all of the video sources and all of the XML data all ready to go, we are now ready to start pulling the information into vMix. One of the important things that I need to do with live XML first is to make sure that my live file type is set to XML. I choose that rather than Excel only because it makes a smaller file, which very slightly improves performance and I'll take any improvement I can get. I've also set the live file path to make sure that it is saved in a place that I will be able to find it. And now I'm ready to actually add that to my vMix elements. Now I've started here with one that I've already put together, but I will pull it apart and show how it's done. So this item that you see on the, anything you see in vMix on the left-hand side of the screen is considered preview. Anything on the right side of the screen is program. Um, I'm not gonna use this as a tutorial for vMix. There are lots of videos on YouTube that go into a lot more detail about all the buttons and capabilities that vMix has. So I'm just gonna focus on the small handful of things that I need to do in order to create the video output for the external display as well as the webcast. So what I will do is I will go into my title editor. So the first time I did this, I would have gone into add input and I would have chosen title. And then you'll see that there are a great number of titles that come built into vMix here. They have tickers, they have scoreboards. So this was where I was mentioning earlier that you don't have to design your own scoreboard and you don't have to design your own score bug and overlay, you can take advantage of some of the information that is already loaded, preloaded into vMix. Um, so you can get started with this even if you don't uh, feel up to doing all of that graphic design work. We got there over time. We didn't start that way. So if I choose from my recent items or I could browse for it, that's where you'll see that I have some of my items preloaded, including basketball full screen stats. So I went ahead and loaded that one. Once I load this up, you can see that each of the data elements that I defined shows up as an element that I can put a value in. Now, when you first create this, it's just going to start with whatever default value you already had. It's then up to you to go into data source and assign one. Now I already have the scorebot configured, but if I didn't have the scorebot configured, I would have gone into manage and I would have hit the plus button to create a new data source and I would have chosen XML. And then you will navigate to the XML file and I would have given it a path. Oops, let's delete that one because I didn't want a second one. I would have given it a path of slash info. Slash info tells it that everything that's inside that XML file lives under the info node that's coming over from vMix, which you can see right there. So I don't want to actually see the info node itself. I want to see everything under it. Once I've done that and given it a name, you can see that all of those data elements are now coming over in table form. There is only going to be one record, so you don't have to worry about selecting from multiple records because the, the score bot or the score connect device will only be sending over one at a time. The last thing that I changed before I saved this is I changed this. This will default to a thousand milliseconds, better known as one second. However, once we get under a minute, the clock actually does show tenths of a second, so I want this to update data every 100 milliseconds rather than every thousand. You don't want to set this data, this value any lower than it needs to be because that will degrade performance, but you do want to set it low enough that it will stay up to date with what's actually coming from the scoreboard. So once that data source is defined, then I can choose that my data source is coming from the scorebot, the table is XML, and here's where I was mentioning earlier that you can get a little bonus if when you're designing your titles, you name the columns exactly the same as the data elements that come out of the scorebot, because then you can simply choose auto instead of scrolling through the whole list and picking for each individual data element. You can also tick the box that says apply to all fields in this title and it will set the same auto value onto everything. You have to be careful though, because some of my data elements are actually static, like TOL for timeouts left. That is not a data element, so I don't want that to come from the scorebot. 
likewise the period caption um, and also the logos uh, those are not going to come from the uh, score table or the scoreboard data instead i'm just going to have to browse for those the old-fashioned way uh, and find them in my list and those i update before each game so that's not a big deal because we just have to change those once and then it's good to go for the whole game likewise i pulled in a similar title to do my overlay so the overlay has again the clock fields period special v bonus special so on so on so on and again i've pulled the um, different colors in to cover up the black and also the logos will cover up the corresponding component that you see here on the lower third score so now i have that i also have my period end that i can put up i use that one as well and now we're ready to go so i have a couple things that i need to do first of all i'm going to turn on full screen which actually was already on because I came that way when I loaded the settings, but you click on full screen to make it green. So this is where you need to make sure that your external display is plugged in to your computer's HDMI out or VGA out or DVI out or whatever kind of connector you have. You have to make sure that it's plugged in before this button will become available. Once you put the full screen on, you can choose for display one, which of your inputs would you like to be going to the external display so i can choose this which is input one which is my stats so the stats are going to stay on the external display regardless of what i actually send to the webcast or i could have chosen any of the other three inputs or i could have chosen that i want the output window which is what's on the right side of the screen so if i choose output then the video score table is going to get whatever i send to the webcast uh, which is usually not what i want i want something different on the video display or you can choose preview preview is whatever is in the left window but again i want to lock it onto input one the entire time so that's now going to my external display and then I need to set up my live stream. Again, this is optional. You don't have to live stream. You could stop right there and you'd have your video display working. You don't have to do any live streaming at all. Or you could, if you're not doing a live stream, you could do a record instead. So you can record to a local disk. You can live stream or you can do both. Just be aware that if you do both, you'll be placing that much more demand on your graphics processor and don't be surprised if it gets laggy and buggy.